This is difficult for me to put out there, but I've had enough. This is a response to ongoing callouts and rumors about my alleged past. I want to lay this to rest. Trigger warning. Sensitive subjects. Now, you should know by now that uh, what these sensitive subjects entail is this person fucking their dog. So, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you should tr trigger warning it with that instead of sensitive subjects. Just say, you know, trigger warning, I fucked my dog. You know, that might that might be better. That might be a little bit more on point. But, you know, we're going to... I'm gonna check out this this document here, um, from from your person. And uh, at first, I didn't know if this was a, I, I assumed this was a dude because I mean, all of the other degenerates that we talked about from these zoo people are dudes. But never forget that white girls fuck dogs. This is apparently a woman, and this apparently all harkens back to something from like 2008 that uh, people are calling her out for finally now. So I mean. T took some time, I guess, but... Okay, I've had enough. To furry call out or whoever is behind it and everybody else harassing me, you seriously need to stop. Let's have this conversation. You know, Chad, I'm just starting the conversation. You are wrong about so many things. Here's some honest context to fill some major gaps in the story being perpetuated about me. Well, I mean, I don't know if we need the gaps filled in quite the way that you filled them, but, uh... Spoken from my heart, since I'm tired of strangers consuming this twisted narrative about who I supposedly am, what I identify as, and my past and present. I changed my path 12 years ago. I screwed up. I took a threat from law enforcement seriously, and I changed my behavior when presented with a choice to either turn my life around or face some very real, serious consequences. I was outed to my parents in the process. Those events scared the shit out of me and was a major wake-up call that I never, ever want to relive. It was enough. Believe me when I say I didn't get away with anything. I was fucking... It was traumatic and embarrassing and was a major turning point in my life. I don't do the things I'm accused of anymore and I haven't pursued them in a very, very long time. I'm non-practicing. I never said anything publicly about the situation. It's funny that you're not mentioning any of the things that you're accused of, because that would draw too much attention to those things that you were accused of. Instead, we're just going to leave it up to people's imagination. So if you're me, you're assuming it's some really depraved shit. And if you're one of your fucking, uh, like, cronies, you're going to assume, ah, oh, you know, it was just some aggressive petting. It just, It was just dog petting that went a little too far. You know, it's fine. It happens to the best of us. Um, oh god, this is impossible to fucking read. Where the fuck was I? Jesus Christ. Uh, I never said anything about the situation because it was scary, embarrassing, and the whole story was way too convoluted to try to explain to hateful strangers who probably wouldn't listen anyways. I never said anything because when I first tried to fight back, everything I said got twisted and turned around on me, so I saw no point in even trying. I never said anything because I didn't want friends, family, and minors following my Twitter to be reading about my past sexual identities exploration on unmentionable avenues of the internet. Exploration, yeah. I'm just exploring my sexuality, you know? Some people suck dicks, other people uh, suck dog dicks. You know, it's fine. It's all on a spectrum, I think. It's it's okay. Um, because I didn't want to damage anybody else. I never said anything because I'm a generally passive person. Oh, so you were the bottom then. Okay. And I've been a coward uh, about uh, confronting this. I never said anything because I moved on and because it is and was nobody's business. No, you never said anything because if you mentioned, hey, by the way, I fuck dogs. Like... <laughs> Only a few people are going to support you on that, and uh, we're going to get into one such person who's supporting her in a little bit, but, uh, and you'll never guess who. But, um, yeah, um, I never said anything because I didn't want to reward shitty call-out culture behavior with an even an ounce of acknowledgement. I never said anything because that, pa that part of my past was too traumatic for me to dwell upon and put out into the open. Ah, uh, the knot was a little bigger than you anticipated. Uh, uh, that happens. I never said anything because I wasn't ready to share this private, embarrassing part of myself with thousands of people. Uh, well, you know, shame about that. <laughs> uh, oopsie poopsie. I kind of did, I kind of did just that. Uh, 
uh, and with the potential for being judged callously for it. Remember, chat, don't judge her callously for fucking her dog. I know my actions shattered the trust and respect of a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people had in me, and I'm sorry. I screwed up. I made a conscious dis- choice to stop, and I grew, but I never said anything. Well, I mean, you know, one can hope that that's true. One can hope, but uh, you're not really addressing any of what you specifically did, so I don't know about that. Uh, Twelve years ago, I was in my early 20s, living on my own for the first time ever, and in a toxic, stressful uh, first major relationship that was spiraling out of control. My partner and I at the time were utterly incompatible and didn't know how to end our relationship like adults. So both of, both of us kept acting out in more and more destructive, bizarre behaviors. Yeah, you know, he'd go out for nights at the casino. She'd get gang-banged by the local uh, hounds of, of the neighborhood. You know, it's, it's, it happens. Uh, it's typical, mer- typical relationship stuff. Uh, but because I was so unhappy in my relationship, I made some reckless, self-destructive decisions and developed some stress-induced porn consumption habits, which I came to deeply regret indulging in. This is the stuff you have heard rumors about. My posts in that space never led anywhere. Apparently, she posted on Beast Forum, by the way, everybody. She might have. She was active around the same time on Beast Forum that a uh, carpet sample fursuit guy was, actually. What an interesting crossover. I wasn't expecting this. Um... Let me see. I only shared content there so I could download porn. Uh, I since made mistakes with my actions. I made major mistakes with my actions during that time. I was mostly writing in a stoned haze during the most troubled period of my life as a sort of exploration of orientation. Yeah, you know, guys, I'm just oriented toward fucking dogs. Why does it always come down to the orientation thing? Like, it, that's not... It's not what it is, exactly. It's not... Uh, you can't... Oh, uh, God, I'm not doing this again. Go watch my fucking zoo map stream. I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> this is... Okay. Uh, I was... Uh, uh-huh. Stoned haze. Escapism from my troubled relationship. Man. Man, how bad was this guy that she decided she would rather fuck dogs instead? Man. Man. Fellas. Out there. Fellow men, just remember, if your girlfriend dumps you, she's probably more willing to fuck a dog than you, apparently. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting from this. Uh, I made major mistakes. Since then, I've done a lot of blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't identify with what I wrote or shared there anymore or the person I was at that time, and I don't even remember most of what I wrote. I blocked it out. Oh, that's so convenient, isn't it? Uh, Since then, I have done a lot of major self-therapy sessions in the form of psychedelics and meditation to overcome the... Oh yeah, that's good. Do psychedelics. That's that's great. That'll that'll really straighten you out. That's good. Uh, To overcome the impulses of my paraphilia and orientation. Stop saying orientation. Stop saying orientation. You don't have an orientation for fucking dogs. That's not how that works. You stupid fucking whore. Um, Let me see here. Uh, Which for me has worked, but was publicly unmentionable due to legalities and taboo. Yeah, those pesky legalities and taboo and morality and, uh, you know, common sense. Uh, Though... Through, through multiple sessions of deep meditation, I gained valuable perspective. I learned to separate fantasy from reality, and have made a lot of progress rewiring my mind as best as possible. That led to a lot of growth and change. I've been pra- non-practicing for 12 years and intend to stay that way. Since you are also obsessed with what I'm having sex with, I want to make it absolutely clear that I only take out my sexual urges on my wonderful, loving, human husband these days. Period. And for what it's worth, sex toys saved my life, Chad. <laughs> I spied this line out of the corner of my eye, and I was so excited to finally get a chance to read it. Uh, sex toys saved my life. Sam's story was complicated. He was an out-of-control red zone dog at a shelter I used to train dogs at. and was. Why are these people all allowed to work at fucking shelters and, like, dog walking? What the fuck? The fucking carpet sample guy got the same shit. These people need to be more fucking, like, careful with who they're goddamn hiring. Do a goddamn Google search. What in the shit? (sighs) 
he was slated to be euthanized for aggressive dominant behavior. Oh, that's perfect for you, isn't it? I gave him a chance at life and rescued him with intentions to work on his challenging behavior. Maybe adopt him as my own or find a home for him. I worked with him for a few months and turned some of his bad behavior around and explored my impulses on a few occasions. My ex began to loathe the dog due to behavioral issues and likely jealousy. Man, imagine being such a fucking cock. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. No, I'm sorry. That's that's just... Um, <clears throat> Refused to work on his behavior modification with me and started regular. Oh, he needed to modify his behavior, bitch. <laughs> the man, the, uh, you know, you're right. Actually, he dates a fucking woman that fucks dogs. He sure as fuck needs to modify his behavior. What a fucking simp. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, Get him behaviorally modified, everybody. Make sure to strap those electrodes to the to the temples and the genitals um, with me and started regularly encouraging me to have him youth, euthanized and get a different... Uh, oh, you mean the dog's behavior modification. Oh, God. I thought it was for the guy. God damn it. That would have been too perfect. Never mind. Uh, we're going to get the dog euthanized, get a different, less broken dog. In retrospect, my boyfriend was an arrogant, egotistical shithead. We had had serious conflict while our relationship was falling apart. The dog picked up on that bad energy and mirrored the negativity. At the same time, I was being unreasonable, trying to ask my boyfriend to accept such a dangerous dog into his daily life. My ex told me about how he had dreams that he killed Sam in various ways, and that really scared me for Sam's safety. I realized it was not a healthy environment for anyone involved, so I made the choice to rehome Sam and made a futile attempt to save my relationship. I placed Sam in what ended up being a perfect, loving, forever home where he lived for a decade and had a really wonderful life. It was the right thing to do with the time, and I never said anything about it publicly because it was uh, because I was being harassed by online stalkers who made my, made me fear for my life. Letting him go was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made, and I'm glad I did it. I don't dump dogs. That claim is fucking ridiculous and is not based in reality. So there's like some zoophiles out there who are just mad, apparently, that not that she fucked the dog, but that she, she would just abandon him so callously. How could you use him like that? Like he's just some animal. Um, from what I understand, this sort of neglects to mention the fact that uh, this went on for like years, apparently. Apparently this went on for a series of years. It wasn't just like a month or two that this was happening. Um, news to most here, my 10-year-old dog, Dodger, died two summers ago. He was my white dog furry callout has been posting stolen photos of. I never told Twitter about his death because I couldn't handle receiving collective grief at the time and chose to cope with his passing with grief. What is it with, like, sex weirdos and, like, predators and weird shit like this where they're always like, I just can't deal with all of this stress right now. It's just too stressful. I couldn't deal with this, so I just didn't do it. Eh, fuck off, you fuckers. They're all fucking like this, I swear to God. Um... I chose to cope with his passing with grace and peace. I spent the whole first eight months of 2018 caring for him while he developed osteosarcoma in his shoulder. Right, okay. We're, she's a great person, everybody. She's a good person. She cares for dogs. She's a good person. Um, furry call out. Stop it. You have dehumanized me. Obsessively stalked my online private spaces everywhere engaged in targeted harassment harassment oh no she's being harassed the girl who takes dog dick up the ass can't handle a little bit of fucking criticism on the internet oh what a shame what a, what a shame uh slandered my business and reputation on assumptions publicly outed my last private refuges on the internet subjected me to a lot of unjust biased abuse and I'm honestly livid and fed up. Who are you to police me, my friends, followers, customers, the fandom, or inform your new following of mostly minors about this crap, and encourage them to shout me out of the fandom on ill-informed claims? I have received hate messages and honest death wishes from literally dozens of 13 to 17 year olds. Only literally dozens, huh? Hmm. Have you been on the internet long? 
Oh, that's seems like a seems like a slow day, depending on what circles you're in. But uh, uh, who have been reading about this shit? You've been perpetuating. What the fuck, man? How do you possibly think it's doing the fandom any good to dredge up sp- uh, and spread such taboo, toxic narratives and spear them in the face of the fandom as a whole? Well, you know, probably because harboring people like you is a problem. So. We could read the rest of this. It's more of a fucking non-apology. Complicated story. Courage to write this. Guys, we gotta gotta address the courage that it took for her to write this. Yeah, you know. More of a non-apology. And that's fine. And we can look at more of it if we want. But I don't really think that's necessary. I think it's more important to take a look at... uh, Well, there's some DMs I'd like to look at. But first... Uh, maybe I should look at this this blog here. This was linked by our good our good friend Ark, the one that got away. A popular furry artist and costume maker committed gross animal abuse on camera right under the nose of law enforcement. She has escaped any serious consequences for her actions. This is from 2010. This is from over 10 years ago. Chat. There are some forum threads about me and what I do in my spare time. Says Allison Reed. There really is a need to go back and rethink the standards for scandal in the furry community. Hang on, let me, let me do this a little bit. Most of what we hear about is inconsequential idiocy. People acting childish, people getting a scam, and petty backstabbery. But this is changing. For reasons possibly related to the growth of the subculture in the past few years, the standard for furry drama has finally been raised to that of true crime. The Java Chicken incident is just one of many. Witness the longtime artist getting busted with real chi- uh, child pornography, or the panda costumed Republican aide trying to pick up teenaged boys. Uh, boy, wow, thanks. Can I? Can I? I think I might need to look at these later for another for other videos. Uh, oh, god damn it! God damn it! I'm gonna have to look those up. Whatever. Anyways. Um, the new era of scandal continued when one of Furry's most most popular artists and costume makers was found to be having sex with her dog. Obviously, she wasn't the first and certainly not the last, but given that there were a couple of other similar incidents at the time that did result in an arrest and conviction, the hope was that this would end the same way. It did not. The entire thing progressed almost entirely out in the open and revealed a massive deficiency in California's what? Of course it's fucking California. It's either going to be Florida or California, of course. Um, California's widely praised animal cruelty laws. Reed was able to successfully infiltrate the shelter system and use the inf- the, the connection to obtain a dog for the express purpose of grooming it for sexual exploitation. To our knowledge, she is yet to face criminal charges for this. It is one of the worst bestiality cases in California since Marjorie Noller, and nobody knows much about it outside of a few isolated internet communities. Um, so, again, this is a thing that people have known about for some time. Um, uh, I'm wondering if... Hmm. Yeah, there's some more interesting stuff here. Hang on. Um, <clears throat> current furry output. Okay, so keep something in mind here. Currently known as uh, known pseudonyms are Java and Java Chicken. Keep in mind the name Java. We're gonna get back to Java in a little bit. That's that's interesting. Keep in mind Java. Um, typical in a lot of ways. Lots of porn. Lots of mild stuff. All of. Oh wow, that happens. Okay. All of it in her unmistakable watercolory scribbly style. Uh, in furry, uh, the thing is, there was an increased amount of bestiality in that porn. In furry land, this is ignored because it's, well, not real. Much like with cub porn, it's assumed that if an artist draws an illegal sexual act, it doesn't necessarily mean that he or she is interested in committing that act in real life. After all, just fantasizing about it doesn't actually hurt anyone, so as long as it remains a fantasy, there's no sense in punishing that person for what is essentially a thought crime. The problem is that bestiality isn't illegal in many parts of the country, and in other uh, and in others, as we're about to find out, the laws against it are worse than useless. It is a national disgrace that bestiality is a felon a felony in only 17 states. As a consequence, dog fuckers are quite bold. They've got a countless they've got countless advocates and support groups, and as long as they live in a shitty enough state or are careful enough with their personal details. They will probably never have to worry about a knock on the door from the cops. It's sick, it's sad, and the situation will is not liable to get any better anytime soon. Um, now we're talking about Beast Forum here. 
People wanted to give her the, the benefit of the doubt, but it was a huge mistake. Photos of her molesting her dog, Sam, were pro uh, probably posted to the site around late 2006, and the videos date back to 2008. The evidence is overwhelming. It's something of a mystery why they didn't garner attention any sooner. It's as if people just assumed that nothing could be conclusively traced back to her would come out of the whole deal. Uh, most animal molesters are usually a lot more clever about hiding direct evidence than Reed ever was. So this woman is not only a dog fucker, but she's like not a very good dog. She's not a very good dog fucker. She 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 apparently it was all tied to her like public like name or whatever. Uh, first, what was first, what was revealed was fairly shocking. Years ago, she had, oh, hang on, hang on, there, we missed this one. Late last year, however, something changed. Some, something made people start to notice, and that something was a post on the now defunct image board, uh, image board known as Drama Chan. These days, most tips regarding abhorrent behavior and prominent community figures are done anonymously on image board type forums. This was certainly the case for Reed. None of these boards are particularly reputable. They're all basically clones of B, for Christ's sakes. But in this case, it was a non-issue. The thread on Drama Chan contained direct links to evidence. What was revealed was fairly shocking. Years ago, she had volunteered at an animal shelter. She adopted her first victim from the facility and through some amount of bureaucratic trickery, managed to get the dog a vasectomy. This is a rare procedure. It's typically only used if it's medically necessary or if the dog is going to be used for obedience training considered a serious red flag if someone lobbies hard enough for it when adopting a dog, as this is a favorite tactic among zoophiles for getting a hold of animals that are legally fixed, fixed, but still intact for their purposes. Apparently, her shelter didn't get the memo until it was too late, as she claims to have called up around 30 veterinarians before finding one who was willing to do the procedure. Over the next few years, she sexually abused the dog, often on camera. The gory details were posted to Beast Forum. The number of times this happened over the years is not known. After keeping the dog for a few years, she was forced to get rid of it as he was showing signs of aggression and was becoming difficult to control. Her boyfriend at the time threatened to have the dog put down, and she responded by dumping him and giving the dog away. It's not exactly clear who she gave the dog away to, and it's even less clear where she got her new dog. So she's got a new dog, and I mean, as far as we know, she currently has a dog. There's, there's our white girl in question, everybody. In incidental vagabonds. Uh, so yeah, there's there there she is, and um, again, she's she's really sorry though. That's the really important thing to remember is that she's sorry, is that she's really sorry. I mean, I mean, fuck you for calling her out for those things that she did, but she's sorry though, but fuck you for calling her out, you fucking scum. How fucking dare you, you pieces of fucking shit. You harass her, you fucking stalk her all over the goddamn internet, but she's sorry though. That's the important thing. So we're going to take a look at some DMs here from a very interesting set of people. Remember I told you before to keep in mind the name Java. These are DMs between... Dragoneer and Java. Title RE, can I be removed from this site? Hey Dragoneer, I'm undergoing some life changes, and I was wondering if you could delete my account from FA. It is kind of urgent because I've gotten tangled up in the law and there's an internet witch hunt out to get me. Thanks. And, um, Dragoneer responds, uh, we really have no way to do that. What's going on? People from What the Fuck FA, LJ, and Drama Chan played detective on me and sent a load of personal information about me to the sheriff's department and outed me as a zoo. I got in trouble. I'm fucking done with furry because there's so many malicious people out there. Not a problem, says Dragoneer. I've sort of feared that over time, too. Hmm. I'll keep it private, and if possible, I'll see what we can do about getting an exception. And uh, we've got her reporting some specific names of people. And uh, Dragon here, Dragoneer says, "Don't delete the harassment when it's left. I'll need it to be. I'll need to be able to see it in order to take action. And trust me, I will. I know it may hurt, but it's the only way I can take proper measures." And um, here we have again. Okay, I'll do that from now on. Thanks for letting me know. You'll probably be hearing from me soon. And then from Dragoneer, I left a shout on your page. If anyone's stupid enough to harass you after that, let me know. They'll get a new one torn. 
So if you're not initiated, because I certainly the fuck wasn't, uh, if you're not initiated, who might Dragoneer be? Who is this big boy who's going to get all of these nasty, nasty, hateful people telling people that she fucks dogs uh, off of the internet? Who's this? Who is this? This nice boy keeping it private for her. Who who is this person? Who 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 is who's Dragoneer? Because I I sure as hell didn't know. Uh oh! Turns out he's the uh, site director of Furfinity. Hmm. Turns out he uh, runs Furfinity. Everybody. So uh, there's your unequivocal proof that Furfinity houses zoophiles. And, uh, what was the other thing? What was the other? Oh, oh, uh, that's right. Um, dun, 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 Uh, but in all honesty, yes, this is, uh, of course, I mean, of course we knew. You knew? Of course we knew, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just the general site director for Affinity. Apparently, at least one of the other people on board the uh, the the mo- the admin staff at for Affinity is also a known zoophile. So, I mean, really, this just confirms extra what people already knew. You know, a couple months ago, I did a stream after the snake thing stream. I'm probably going to re-upload it, actually, maybe tomorrow. Cut it down. Uh, it was the one that I, I uh, uh, Frederick Knudsen showed up for. And uh, we read the the Wolf Apology. But before we read the Wolf Apology, we looked at somebody by the name of Cepheus. Cepheus Rivendell. Or Rivendare or something. I don't really remember his name. But uh, three puppies dies on his cock. That was the uh, the famous quote from Cepheus. And uh, the, the title of the stream was, Why in the fuck is Cepheus... Well, not in so many words. <laughs> uh, slightly more YouTube monetization friendly. Why is Cepheus still not in jail? Why is Cepheus still not in jail? And one of the things that was very noteworthy about it, yeah, Cepheus, uh, still has a Fur Affinity page, still still available on Fur Affinity, still has a Twitter, still has people talking to him on Fur Affinity, this dude who boasts about puppies dying on his cock and uh, has a video of him fucking a dead deer, still on Fur Affinity. And I wondered, you know, why? Why? What kind of people must be running Fur Affinity? that, uh, you know, that that would be acceptable. Oh, it's the kind of people that'll keep it private when people, uh, find out that you're fucking dogs. They'll do their best to, 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 to shut, you, shut them up. You wouldn't want any bad, nasty trolls coming onto your furry website and talking about those people fucking dogs. So, I guess, uh, guess that's about it for the, the, the zoo apology, really. I just oh oh one one final thing. Who is Dragoneer really? Who who is our man's? Who is he really? Oh, he looks like uh, autistic movie Bob. Okay, that's cool. Very good. Very good. Okay, well, um, that'll about do it for the the furry apology or sorry zoophile apology of the stream. Um, because really, I just wanted to kind of make that point pretty quickly. That uh, yeah, for affinity knows. The main site for furries is uh, harboring these people. And uh, I know there's a lot of you people in the chat here that are going to be all not all furries, but well, mm, a very, very large conglomeration of furries at the very least. Uh, you might want to consider your you might want to consider your kinks more carefully. Anyways, so that'll be the apology, quote unquote. And the uh, unequivocal proof that Fur Affinity harbors zoophiles. Um, let's uh, let's move on.